I've already told you my opinion. What? You've discounted it, so yeah. yeah, carry on. Well, it works. What's up with you? The only thing is, you have to make sure that the magnet and the reed switch are in close proximity. It, yeah. well, this is just to, to prove it works, mate. This isn't the final version. The final version is when you get involved. That's the problem, because when you first close the seal, when you first close the seal, you get compression, and then it comes back out again, so you've got to make sure you get the distance right. Hello, this is a fridge-freezer alarm using minimum parts. Obvious example, kids open the freezer, don't shut it properly, wake up in the morning, puddle of water on the floor, all your freezer stuff's completely ruined. So something like this, if it's not already fitted to your freezer, would be a really good idea. What we've got, effectively, looking at the uh, diagram, is we have two ZTX689B transistors, and you require a voltage of about uh, 1.2 to 1.3 volts to bias both of these on. In a normal situation, this J1 is a reed switch. It's one of these things over here. And that's held closed. That's held clo in a closed position by um, a magnet. And therefore, the voltage across C1... The, the capacitor can never reach the 1.2 volts, therefore both these transistors, that's this one and this one, cannot switch on. When the magnetic field is removed, this J1 opens and the capacitor begins to charge. Its charging rate is set by the value of C1 and also the value of this variable resistor at the top here. When we get about 1.2 volts at this point, it switches on Q1 and Q2 current flows through the buzzer and the buzzer sounds. In terms of power supply, the finished version is designed to work with around four or five volts. In this one, I'm using nine volts just to demonstrate it really. There'll be another video showing the finished version later on.